Um, anyways, um, this, this again, is in this movement validation repo. Um, and all I did was uh, try and outline the steps that were necessary to go from a video to statistics. Um, and I don't have that full documentation, but, it, but it's starting here. So, so the first thing is we need to go from a video to skeletons and contours and then actually events like is the worm coiled? Um, is, you know, is the worm doing, I don't know, what, what other events, you know, laying an egg or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need to worry about this too much because it's already been done for us. Um, eventually, uh, <clears throat> presuming when, when we do the artificial worm modeling, we'll, we'll sort of have, hopefully, magically, someone will be able to provide these to us, the skeleton and the contour and, and events. It can tell us uh, when it's laying an egg. Well, oh, by the way, it tells us it's coiled, hopefully. So. By the way, did you guys see the latest, um, the latest worm model from uh, Andre? Um, prob it was uh, it was in yesterday's uh, it was in yesterday's meeting so uh, the the coding meeting so you probably wouldn't have unless no you no I missed that no. do you have a, if you could post a link that'd be great yeah yeah I'll I'll dig it up here while you're while you're talking so okay. um so anyways from from that then uh, I'm gonna change the name of this but you basically uh, take those the skeleton the contour and <clears throat> a set of events and you expand that into a much more documented set of base features. Um, the code for, for that is described uh, in these two links, one of which is their original code, and then I uh, just reorganized a little bit uh, in that second link. Um, I, we're working on a, a better format, basically just having a table with instructions as opposed to, if you look at those links, um, it's, uh, actually I can just pull it up, uh, let's see. Um, you know, if you look at this, it's, uh, I'd rather have a table than, than what you're seeing here, which is just MATLAB code. So I think that'll, that'll help us document things better. So, so hang on, when you yeah. say, so, so when, uh, when you say, so the data info, this is, this is just the data structure or is this actually like how much, how much, um, processing does this, uh, script do? Um, so, so it's, it's a... It does a, it, a lot of processing has already been done at this point, and I don't know I, the, the instructions. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit with with a quick summary at the end. Um, but but for example, um, one of the base features that that is tracked is the length of the worm uh, through the entire video. So, so in the feature files that those mat files that we have, um, there is a entry that says morphology dot length, and there's a value for every frame, and so so. Morphology.length would be a, a base feature um, that, that would be present. Now, now, there's some processing that is necessary to do that. Um, in this case, it's, it's relatively simple. Um, if you look at something like um, the wavelength, um, posture.wavelength right here, uh, primary and secondary, I might be misspeaking on this because I, I haven't looked at it exactly. Um, but the idea with those is that you treat the worm as a sinusoid, so you rotate it in some way. You take a Fourier transform of the skeleton. Uh, you then look at the frequency domain, and you, you choose the peak frequency, and that would be what that value represents, and then that's over time. So that, that obviously is like a little bit of processing that needed to happen from going from just the skeleton to, to that value. Yep. Um, but all of these values are then... Uh oh, yeah, I think we lost him. Uh, hey. What's that? Oh, there was a there was a bandwidth hiccup there, and I think we we lost you after after uh, the last thing. So just last uh, ten seconds. Uh, so so uh, there was a little bit of processing that went on to compute uh, this posture dot wavelength uh, primary from the skeleton, um, but that value uh, over all the frames is what is stored in that that base feature set. Um. That, that's what I would refer to as a, as a base feature, right? And that would be in the, and those would be stored in the math files. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so then, um, sort of interestingly, they don't st they they don't stop there. Uh, they then expand that in some really crazy way uh, to it's not all that crazy, but um, they they get significant expansion of those features by breaking it down into subsets. So um, actually, if we look at, 
there's another Markdown file called Expanded Features that I started to work on. So you can take one um, one feature. Let's let's get back to the length example. Um, there's a length of the worm throughout the entire uh, video. Um, that is, uh, you could break that down into what was the length when it traveled in all directions, or what was the length specifically when it was going forward, backward, or, or paused. So, so that's four different things, all directions, and then forward, backward, paused. Um, in addition to that, um, let's say uh, the length could be negative, which it couldn't, so maybe let's think of uh, bend angle, uh, the, the bend angle of the head. Um, because that could be plus or minus, you can further break that down into what was the bend angle while going forward and while while the worm was going forward and while the bend angle was positive or while the bend angle was negative. So that in, in total will give you 16 combinations. So suddenly you have like roughly 50 features and that gets expanded into uh, 700 features that they use. Okay. Okay, so obviously we could go through all these, but I, that's, it's good just to get a, a flavor of what they're like. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's what I mean by, by the expanded features. There's actually a list of them in the Open Worm docs, which um, maybe we can talk about in a, in a bit that the documentation is a separate issue. Um, but there is a, there's a list. This is uh, from a supplemental uh, table that was provided on Ev's recent Nature Methods paper. Um, Anyways, that's that's what I mean by all features from that base set of features which are stored in, in that math file. Um, then, uh, let's see, uh, then somehow magically they get values that are that are for statistical testing. Um, I haven't gone through the details of that yet, um, but we're in the process of doing that. And then uh, this is mainly for, for Michael to be able to reference as he works on some Python stuff. Um, this is a summary of the MATLAB calls that are being made. So you have a bunch of worm parsing files. Uh, you then have this function feature process.m, which is part of the GUI code, which calls a bunch of other files. And then in particular, you have something called worm to histogram, which we'll go into in a second. Um, from the histogram data, you create stats. And I actually don't know what this worm stats to matrix.m does. Okay. Um, so that's that's the, the, the general overview of, of this whole thing. Um, one, one relevant note that hopefully I won't spend too much time on, um, I think this is because the videos are long. Um, they, as a way of truncating the data that's there, they actually compute histograms of the videos. So the statistical values that go into um, the statistical tests aren't the length of the worm over the entire video, but it would be like uh, histogram values. Uh, so it, it, you know, account of like how many times uh, the worm was at a length of 20 microns, how many times the worm was at a length of 21 microns, or whatever is a reasonable values for that. Make sense? Yeah, but so then is that um, is worm to histogram? Are the histograms then processed to do something else, or is it a separate? There's a separate. This is a fork in the road where there's a separate summary of the different statistics that are taken as like single values or aggregated in some way, not like a no, no, that, there's no, there's no fork. That that is a, that is a integral step of the processing. Um, the stats, from what I can tell, are computed on the histograms. Um, and Michael and I were talking about how that makes. Um, I'm, I was a little bit surprised by this, but I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Um, and okay. I'll, I'll, like I said, I haven't actually gotten into the, the step four here, which is statistical testing, but I'm pretty sure that. Um, because I never provide a, a reference to the original feature file when computing uh, the stats, uh, that is is literally working on those histograms to compute stats. Hmm. Um, which and I think the beauty of our, I mean, I think Jim and I we were just talking about how uh, maybe our first major goal, Jim's idea, was that we would we would be able to have what we show what they showed in the paper, and so by as the result set so. I think that we'll know for sure by working through this process and arriving at that, trying to get at the same result that they have, that we'll we'll understand exactly how how they're using these histograms and how their how their pipeline works. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
Yeah, um, and this is this is why it's invaluable to actually have the original code, right? So you can any any of these kinds of questions when things get more detailed, you can just go in and ask. So, okay, this is great. This is great. Yeah, so that's that's it on on the documentation side. Um, Michael, I don't know if you wanted to show some of yeah. the Python scripts that you've put together. So I can just too quickly do a little screen share here. Let's see if this works. Um, uh, Let's see here. OK, so hopefully we all see this here. So basically what, I, what I've taken was um, the, this is, maybe I can just give you a link to this file too here. Yeah, that'd be good. Also, if you can um, you can look reduce so you got, the resolution. Yeah, you got some high resolution. But you can use Chrome to zoom up on your, uh, yeah. uh, on your web page. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah, but that's that's how big it needs to be for us. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's perfect. Great. <laughs> it's probably huge for you. Sorry, you guys can't handle the fourteen uh, fourteen forty. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, anyway, so so this is basically um, this this is this is pretty pretty elementary stuff still, unfortunately. But I but I've I started with Jim's uh, uh, just here where he starts uh, he started to, to illustrate how you go from the feature file. To um, basically using Matplotlib to to animate the worm and sort of illustrate uh, graphically how this information is stored within the feature files um, of the Shaver Lab. So basically, I took that uh, what what Jim had done and encapsulated it within a within a class and added some more functionality that can that I can hopefully add on to even more. So so here we start with worm experiment file. Maybe I should call this feature file. Um, the supplemental documentation on this paper. I think it referred to them as experiment files, but maybe I can I can change that given what what Jim's term terminology seems to be. Mm -hmm. um, so so I take the worm's position from the from the H5 uh, so, sorry from the uh, uh, using H5PY here using that utility. I I take take the information from the file and uh, transform it into a um, an array of tuples here, which represent the position of the of the worm's skeleton points at, over time, and then um, and then here you can you can call create animation to actually animate it, and I also threw in that you could you could save it to um, to a video file um, for, for illustrative purposes. So hopefully we can we can do more than just animate the skeleton position. Just again for for illustrative purposes. Um, be able to add things like some of these statistics, maybe overlay them um, to, 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 again, to illustrate what's going on here. So maybe the contour along with the skeleton, maybe along with um, some stats on the side showing the, the length of, uh, or, you know, the, the head angle, as Jim was talking about, over time um, so that um, it, it's clear that we're, we're processing the file in the correct way. Uh, let me see if I can screen share the... Animation itself. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, so you're pulling from the dot mat and you're writing it out in MP4. That's that's basically what that bit is doing. Yeah, exactly. Great. So here we go. And I just I'm just saving a small segment. Yeah. Of the file here. Um, it's all these files seem to be uh, fifteen minute segments. I think that was the experiment protocol. Yeah. And so here, just to save space, I've just saved uh, a twenty five second interval of that file. But you yeah. can grab the position data uh, over a longer interval. 